Hey there, Justin. Thanks for attaching the parts. Uh, I had an idea of what you were doing earlier. I just kind of want to see how you actually made it uh, together in the assembly with the pack and go. Um, so what it looks like is you have your trigger here. Um, and you you didn't line it up really um, in here. So I'm assuming that you were just messing with it and then broke all the links and there's more to it. Um, but if you turn on the wireframe, you'll notice the holes don't line up. Um, so if we open this up, in the part, you'll see that the uh, origin is not through the center of the part. Um, so when you actually make your extrusions, um, you're coming from the middle going both ways, but your sketch isn't on the origin. You have it kicked out uh, basically zero degrees off of a work axis brought in from another part. So I'm guessing that this adaptive is from the other part, and then you have these going with it. So if that is the case, uh, the references have all been broken because if you actually look at here, um, projected line, if you go into here, it doesn't line up anymore. So for instance, right there. So that line should line up to here. So your adaptivity is uh, not uh, valid anymore. Um, a good way to check this is you could basically go to ground and root, select it, grounded origin, so it'll basically stick it at the origin. Um, like Todd was saying, uh, you know, if it's not at the origin, then you know you're gonna have problems. Um, so or grounded for one of them. So since it wasn't uh, drawn at the origin, um, when I grounded it, it moves it down, and then the top part is actually uh, now up higher. Uh, for the trigger there so um, make sure that at least the first or main part is always grounded so basically i think what you're wanting is for this to line up and for it to rock on this point around uh so not necessarily on this point but actually right here and then i don't know why you have a double pivot here um, why well, it's not a full tangent but uh, that's kind of up to you um, an easier way um, to do that is uh, if we actually open this part up and you derive the main part if you make it as a solid body or a surface and you get the solid bodies in here and then you can, if you have any name parameters, you can bring them, those in as well, and then it'll list it in your parameter list. So if you have something specified that you want to keep, it'll be in there. So now that we have our part in here, you'll notice that it's just a kind of a general sketch, and you have your center line right here. So I'm going to turn this one off. And so that's our center. I'm going to redefine our first sketch on to oops drag this above and actually can move above that and we're going to redefine to this work plan and then we can delete this because it's no longer needed um, we'll delete that later too but at least turn off the adaptivity of all this stuff geometry from there and just drag that little part up to the end so it's right here and then we will select it right click and explode it back into place so this dimension here is driven because it's brought in we will make that one the same and you don't have any dimensions anywhere else um, so I'm just going to kind of set these in uh, just to define it. 
really. Um, so let's do this real quick. You always want to make them like rational dimensions rather than these crazy ones because it's going to be hard to measure. It's going to be hard to do pretty much anything. So from here, and let's see how else do we want to lock this thing in. You can right click, show all degrees of freedom, and it kind of goes all over the place. Let's see, let's just draw a perpendicular line here. As construction. There we go. So now we're fully constrained, and you can kind of see how it's uh, you know locked in as far as the dimensions go. So that way, if you ever needed to change anything, you would then be able to drive it from here. And it's going to destroy probably this sketch. So as far as that goes, I'm just going to drag this up. So if you have your, you know, piece here and you were coming out, you know, kind of around. So if we came up to here, out, down, So now you have your part. Um, if you want it to rock, like on a point, I'm not exactly sure how your how this thing, your mechanism works, but uh, I'm sure there's lots of other stuff going on. But um, so once you have it drawn and or the origin is you know set, you can basically turn off the visibility, so it's just the part. Come back to the sketch here, or the assembly here. So now this one's grounded and rooted. You can just do the same with this one if you want. You know, let's throw it right into place. So that way, if you ever change anything on this part, so you can unground it after it's in place. And let's say we make a joint from here to there. It'll flip it around. You can play the animation. It's rigid, so we're going to change it to a rotational. And it's going the wrong way, so we're going to flip it and flip it one more time so then you can play it. Now our limits. We haven't really set that up yet. How do you think we do it? Well, let's go back to our part, look at our sketch. If we draw a line from here to here and here to there. Oops. To here. Make these two equal. Check out our dimension. And let's just make this one zero to one. So it doesn't really matter the length here. We can put it to the end point there and it'll lock it in. Um, just make these construction lines. 
That's 20 degrees, so finish that. And come back in. Did we do the rotation? We did. So let's edit this. Limits starts 0, ends 20. Say OK. Now we have our rotational point. So I don't know if that's what you're looking for is to set up the point like that. Um, that's one way to do it. And that's how I'd probably set it up with a, a derived part. So that way, anytime you change this, um, this little part will update and some of the other dimensions, the whole locations, things like that. Um, you can use adaptive parts, but if you do, make sure that you start it in the sketch uh, here. So you just basically say, turn this off. If I wanted to make that part in an adaptive environment, you just say create part, part two, okay. Let's do it from that part's origin. So you have our custom, or sorry, this part's origin right here, because that's where you want it to be based off of. So now you're in the part. And then you can create your stitch on the origin plane that you had. And you can project your geometry. Now it's going to make this sketch adaptive with a reference to there. So if you ever break it, then you're going to have um, that issue. So you can project this geometry. So if we're going to do it from here, this is how I probably go about doing it. And then. So there's your part, but uh, now if you want to have this thing rotate, it's an adaptive part. So you'd either have to make it unadaptive, then it can move all around, or if it's adaptive, it doesn't move at all. So that's kind of the thing is when you turn the adaptivity off, it'll move, but then when you actually go into it, like you had it, then your adaptivity is in reference to another point, but if you actually change the original part, it won't update necessarily like you want it to unless you keep it. If you're using that uh, in an assembly environment where you want to animate it, I'd probably say using derived parts is a little bit easier to control the main shape and then animate it um, after the fact. So hope that helps.